Okay, this is Cool Dude Clem here, and I'm doing a follow up video to the. Excuse me, I was talking there. I'm doing a follow up to the Why Can I Not Get Sound and 3D Acceleration Working in Virtual Box. And as you almost undoubtedly heard there, I now have sound. Thanks to people who have commented in saying I was using the wrong version of Windows 2000. So, thanks for suggesting that. Now, to be honest, when I was downloading the Windows 2000 ISO, I thought I was downloading Windows 2000 Professional, and as it turns out, I was downloading the server version. And when I installed that and found it was the server version, well, I didn't really think that much of it. I thought, well, it will probably still work, and obviously it didn't. But I now have a working version of Windows 2000 Professional, and it now has sound. Still no direct 3D acceleration, but at least it has sound now. So if we go into the X diag here, don't care, go away. Got direct draw, but no direct 3D. However, I can play some games on this now. So let's go to. Uh, Oh, let's go to Brave Dwarfs, because that works. I'm quite nostalgic about this game. It's one I was used to have on my first Windows computer. I do actually have a registration code for this, but I just can't be forced to put it in at the moment. As you can see, it's working. Frame looks good, we've got sound. Everything is working pretty much just as it should. Oh, I won't play too much of that, but. Yep, the only drag about this thing is that Direct 3D doesn't work. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Windows XP to you too. I don't know why kids just go all the time but still that's what I'm gonna do because virtual machines apparently are not really good for gaming anyway. Okay so let's get started. Now first of all I'm gonna create a partition on my disk where I can install Windows XP so let's go and do that Let's bring this up, and this is where I'm going to create a new partition on my disk, where Windows XP is going to be installed. So, go, go onto my main disk here, and shrink volume. Now, I don't know if it's going to be able to do this while I'm recording, but we'll see. So, I've told it to shrink by 40 gigabytes, which is plenty enough for Windows XP. Okay, and there we go, it's done. We now got 40 gigabytes, more or less, of unallocated space, which is going to become a new partition where Windows XP is going to be installed. So, let's turn it into a partition. So, a new simple volume. Jup. And yet, we want NTFS file system. Just give it a minute or two. And there we go. We now have space to install Windows XP. Okay, well here we are in my Windows 7 desktop. I've put in the Windows the Windows XP installation CD. So I'm about to restart, and we can install Windows XP on that other partition. Someone tell me why it takes so long for a computer to shut down. I mean, all it's got to do is turn the power off. You'd think... That would be very easy, wouldn't you? But no. I'm sure you can hear that plane going over right now. 
Now I don't know if this is the Windows XP disk that I slipstream that's got SATA drivers on it. I hope it's the right one. I don't know if it is, but we'll see. Of course, that is, if this ever hurries up and loads. Right, so now the installer has finally loaded up, selected the other partition on the hard drive, and that's where we're going to install Windows XP. Let's just do a quick format first to make sure that it's absolutely working properly. I really hope that I've selected the other partition, and I haven't just selected my Windows 7 partition. Because I will be so annoyed if I just did that. Anyway, it's installing Windows XP now, so um, I'll be back in just a sec. Right, well, it's installed the majority of Windows XP now. We're just waiting for it to reboot, and let's see what it does. It might boot into Windows XP, it might boot... Oh, there we go. It's booting into Windows XP. It might not boot into Windows 7 anymore, but I can fix that. So, let's just get all this installed. Right, well, I've gone through the, the other part of the installation and answered all the 15 billion questions that it asks during the installation. So by now, we should have a working Windows XP. Just got to install all the drivers and stuff. Yeah, 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 just go and do it. You know how these things are. Ah, uh, here we are, good old Windows XP. So good to see you after all these years, even though I use Windows XP on my computer. Oh, some of you might not notice, might not, um, some of you might be a little bit confused as to what computer actually means. Well, computer is a funny word for computer. And it was the great cassette master who started that whole thing going. Anyway, I'm going to install my drivers now so we can have 3D graphics and sound, because at the moment we've got nothing. So now I'm installing all the drivers. And I'll be back whenever. 16 minutes apparently, according to this, but due to the magic of video editing, I'll be back right now. And because, you know, computers are so stupid, it hasn't installed anything, so I'm going to do all of this manually. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Let's just do it anyway. And I'll be back when this is all done. Okay, we now got internet access. Yay. I don't care. Because I'm not going to be using Internet Explorer because it sucks. I'm just trying to download this thing. So, Internet Explorer just completely locked up on me when trying to download things because it's crap. So, I've had to go on my laptop, download the files on here. So, now I'm just transferring them over to this computer so I can actually install them. Oh, that was all a hassle, but I think we've got everything done now. I'm just running a DX Direct to make sure that everything is working as it should do. So we're good there. I'm going to have to change my resolution again, but actually I might just leave it like that. My graphics card is not fully supported on Windows XP, so it's going to, you know... It will work for games, because I've done it before. Okay, I've got the screen at a much better resolution now. So it won't cut off the bottom of dialog boxes and stuff like that, making things absolutely impossible. So now let's see if it will play any games. This might not work because I've got the, um... It might not like the graphics configuration I've got here. Or it might go back to 640 by 480 of which it has done. Oh, have we even got my saved store, my saved scores here? All right, let's try missions. Oh, yep, yeah. saved everything. Right, let's go to one of the missions here. See if that works. Ooh, 
we don't appear to have any sound, which is kind of weird, unless it's putting it through onto the TV, and I'm sorry that I'm in the way here. Yep, it's put the sound through onto the TV instead of the speakers, I don't know why, but... Alright, let's get through a mission. Also, the fact that I'm using a wireless keyboard here might have a little bit of delay, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. There's a bit of an interesting story behind this game, actually. My cousin used to have this on his computer and I copied it. Then years later, when I reinstalled Windows, I... This is one of the things I forgot to save. I couldn't remember what the name of the game was called. And I spent ages and ages and ages trying to find this game again. And never finding it. And then on Friday the 13th this year, of all of all kind of all the dates. I actually found this game. Yep, I managed to find a game that I'd been that I'd lost for years on the unluckiest day of the year. It's kind of weird though, because Friday the thirteenth, I actually seem to have a lot of luck, whereas a lot of people seem to have luck. I guess I'm just weird. I'm just rambling here. Even though this does work on Windows 7, but uh, this is just doing, doing this as a test to make sure that games will work, and they certainly do. Alright, let's pick up those other two robots. While you observe my extremely terrible driving skills. This is the mission I remember most fondly as well for some reason, I don't know why. I mean, there is more to this game than just this, but, you know. This one. Ah, oh, stop fretting, I'll get you there. Even if I completely destroy my car in the process. I did not see that coming up there. He's very easily impressed, isn't he? Wow! I assume it's a him. I don't know. Do robots even have genders? Okay, play your crappy music. Like I said, that robots like me likes to make crappy music. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Just back to the robot center or whatever it is. And I am completely, absolutely, totally, completely, absolutely, totally, completely lost now. Okay, now I know where I am. Just got to pick up Egbert now. Why 
why I practically destroy the place. How long have I been recording? Ten minutes? Wow. I cannot believe I've been playing this for ten minutes. I think my camera must be lying to me because I have not been recording that long. Whatever. The other place. I have lost it. Actually, that's not true. I lost it years ago. He thinks that's amusing anyway. Isn't it through here? Oh, yeah. It's hard to concentrate when there's a camera watching my every move. Uh, no, that's You should pick up your toys. Someone's going to crash into those if you're not careful. Like I just did just then. Okay there. Right, well, just doing a few more little tests here. Trying with the incredible machine contraptions. And you know what? Shut up, Professor, I'm trying to talk. I have no idea whether this is whether the sound is coming out of the TV or coming out of the speakers. Okay, that's the TV. Um, this music is so funky. I actually had a bit of a deal trying to get this game to work because. My display resolution wouldn't go above 720 by 480, so I had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get that to work, but as you can see, it now does. Because this plays at 800 by 600. Alright, let's play a. Oh. Look at that. One of my old high. One of my old saves is still here. Can you believe it? You can help Mel get home. Don't worry, Mel. I'll get you home. Somehow. Okay, and here we are playing Luxor 2. Now this is one of the games that just simply refuses to run on Windows 7. Luxor 1, surprisingly enough, does actually work, but not this one. I tried playing this in VirtualBox, and this is about as far as I got before it crashed, so, uh... Not quite exactly sure what happened there. My laptop has gotten very quiet since I disabled all the bloatware on it. Earlier it was running its fan constantly on high because, well, of all the bloatware it was running. You see, the thing is, my laptop got a very, very nasty virus on it. And, oh no, the balls are coming. The balls are coming! I'm so scared that the balls are coming, I'm breathing really deeply. Back. Yep, Scarab, you did it wrong, so you gotta go back. Seriously, what's with the breathing? Well, like I said, that virus on my laptop, well, the viruses, they completely took over the thing. And, well, I managed to get rid of them, but it took so much of the OS with it that I was left with a non-functioning Windows, so I had to restore it from the system recovery partition. Which, of course, installs all the bloatware as well, which is really stupid. I mean, that is really stupid, the stuff they put on there that you're never even going to use. That's why I prefer to install Windows manually when I can. Because then you know exactly what you got. 
thought I'd see how well Sonic Time Attack works. And while it does run, it doesn't fill the screen. Now, that happened on Windows 7 as well, so I thought maybe if I run on Windows XP it would fix that problem. But it still doesn't fill the screen. It's perfectly playable though, it's just a bit annoying. And I've forgotten how to grind already. Also, we don't get the nice FM music like I got on the Pentium 2. Nonsense 2000 works, and it plays full screen, would you believe it? So I don't know what the deal with Sonic Time Attack was, which also plays at a low resolution. Out. Right, so if we ever want to see Windows 7 again, I've got to rewrite the boot record, so that's what I'm doing right now. Well, I tried to do the thing with boot ice and I completely fudged the thing up. Windows XP will still load, however, so I'm just, I managed to find an old version of ECBCD that works, so I'm just trying this now. Add the Windows XP entry in, so we should. That does not seem right though. I know it's not on Windows, I know it's not on Drive C. That's not right. I've got two Windows XP's, I don't know what. I don't know if they both link to Windows XP or if one of them links to Windows 7 and the other one links to Windows XP and is someone looking at me? No. Okay, that one loads Windows XP. Alright, well, let's see what happens when the second one is selected. Windows XP again. I was expecting Windows 7. We has a Windows 7 now. Let's see if it actually boots into Windows 7. Yay! We got Windows 7 back. Although, for some reason on my monitor, it looks like it's Windows Vista booting, but it is Windows 7. Just my computer's a bit silly. Well, I'm going to leave it there because, well, despite the slightly screwed up... Like I was saying, despite the slightly screwed up boot menu, everything's pretty much working as it should. So, until next time, goodbye.